Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on your location. We have a very, very important news for you. Please listen to this message very carefully. Somebody that knows Mazim Namdekano up to this time he started this uh, agitation and broadcasting as well. This is GMTV. If today is your first time of coming across our channel, please do us a favor to subscribe, share also, and uh, let other people know as well. On this very one, um, I'm not going to put my audio clip on it so that it will reach a lot of places so that people can share it so it will not be copyright to them. So share it to everywhere, anywhere that you, 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 you want to share it to, to any platform. Either WhatsApp, YouTube, Facebook, anywhere you want to share it, uh, you are free to share this one. So it's not going to be copyright to anybody. Yeah, listen to this in-depth details. As uh, in a, yeah, this man analyzed how he met Nandi Kano and what he does, and the reason why is very, very important to the people of Biafra. And uh, on the agitation as well, the kind of heart that he has for his people. And um, at the same time, he's someone that is uh, very patient and caring among the people. Please, I won't take much of your time. Let's go in there and uh, listen to what this man has to say. All right, let's go there. Hello, Bia fans. If you're a real Bia fan person, please listen to this very message about Mazem Nandi Kano. How I became his follower from 2009, 2010, 11 up to you now. Then I want to re review some secrets that I know about him some things that I know about him. Listen carefully. This one will benefit every one of you, both your family and friends as well. Like this man is not an ordinary person. And uh, the way I saw him at that time, the first time that I, I heard his voice on a uh, on uh, I think social media on Facebook, yeah, I heard his voice on Facebook, and I was saying, "Who is this man? This man is very bold. The way he speaks, is very very bold." And uh, one day I'm going to see him. So on his broker, some of the broadcast, I keep hearing that uh, he's going to different places to go and broadcast. That is uh, where I, at that time I was in London then. So I said one of these days I will find out and uh, go to one of his brokers. I want to see him face to face. And there was a time he went to Ireland and the Ireland people welcomed him. Do you know the good thing about this? Anywhere he goes, he doesn't pay t his ticket. He doesn't. He doesn't uh, buy tickets. They always invite him. The people that are inviting him always buy his ticket to travel to anywhere he's going all over the world. They always buy his ticket. So, and uh, from there, I started saying, I said, this man is very important. You know, he looks like a uh, it's more important than all this president that is a American president or any other person because anywhere he goes, before he reached here, there is a lot of people waiting for him. So let's proceed. And I started listening to him, listening to him. The things started coming to my head. I said, this man, one day I will, I will see him. We'll call him director. At that time, because he's the director of Radio Biafra, so, and uh, I said one day I will see him. So there was a time um, they announced because anywhere he's going to, they will announce it that he's coming to that place, and uh, if you have time, you can go and use that opportunity to see him. 
So I went there. There was the one time he was broadcasting uh, in a place called uh, Peckham. If you know the place called Peckham in southeast in London. So I used to live um, in Luton. That is L-U-T-O-N. I used to live in Luton. So some of his broadcast, um, there's one lady that normally go out. Um, that is, I think, uh, it's like a personal secretary also. Uh, her name is uh, Carol Monde. So if you have been following for a long time, you will know her. She's the white woman. Her name is Carol Monde. So there was a day, a day they came um, to that place. They said they want to uh, do some broadcast. So and uh, on that broadcast there was a meeting. So after the meet, <coughs> after the broadcast, the meeting carries on. So I used the opportunity to join them. And uh, that was where that was my first time I saw him face to face. Even before I saw him face to face, I was uh, I used to chat with him, you know, on Facebook. So, and uh, there was time I called him. Um, no, I didn't call, just chat. So I said, I said, director, I said this job that you are doing is very, very um, like dangerous. So I, I was thinking he's a military man before you know because he has mind to talk a lot of things that he doesn't care who he affect or he even though he will say he doesn't feel sorry for himself so i say wow so after um that uh, bro broadcast um when they want to do the broadcast i went and they uh, i went in there i sat at the at the back so and it was preaching he was saying the gospel he was preaching and preaching me that is talking from here i'm from delta state and i speak okwani i speak yoruba i understand isoko I understand bini i understand yoruba I understand some of Ijo languages I understand Igbo, and I, I do speak some of them as well that's in a funny way so let's proceed as uh, as we go as the as this man was preaching that's mazinam the kind was preaching telling people i was looking at her so this is the one i have been hearing his voice on the uh, on the radio on on uh, facebook as well i said after this i will i will speak to him i will see him so, and uh, there was, uh, after the broadcast, uh, everybody was greeting him, and uh, I, was, I was able to, to meet him to, um, through the lady that is uh, Carol Monday, I was able to meet him, and uh, I shook his hand. I felt like, yes, I have seen him. I have even touched him. Very, very proud that oh definitely anytime he's going any broadcast i i'm going to follow him if i have if i'm around if i'm at home i'm going to follow him to that broadcast so after that day i think a week or two later um i i i posted something about him some people keep criticizing me and blah 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 so i said i don't care so another day as well I there was a time I I said let me try and chat him again if he's going to respond, and I did, and he responded immediately. So I was telling him that I said uh, I don't have document in this country, and uh, I'm I'm trying if I can have because I, the one I applied before, they they denied me, and uh, they didn't give me the document. So they said because I don't have family here. You know, said, uh, you know, said I should not worry. That I should try apply again. That they will give me my document. That's in the UK, United Kingdom. So I said, okay. Um, I tried again, and I applied. In fact, three months 
they gave me my paper. So I told him, I told him, I said, I've gotten my paper and uh, I want to see you. He said, he said he, he's, he's, uh, he's moving around at that, that time and he's not around. So I think he went to, he went to America. He went to one one place in America. I don't know if it's Chicago or something. Yeah, he went there. So, and I said, okay, when he comes, that uh, I will see him. Even upon his, upon his um, visit there in America, there's still other people that wanted to see him. Uh, they want him to come to their meeting to broadcast. So, that's how he moves around. He goes to Israel a um, couple of time um that was the 2000 um that's before 2015 so when he, he was uh, arrested or when he was kidnapped from uh, lagos that time that he stopped in uh, in lagos international airport that's Moha, monitala mohammed so, yeah he stopped there and uh, from there they traced him to where he, he lodged in the hotel before he can go, he can proceed his journey in the next morning. They just went to go and kidnap him, then they took him to Abuja. And that was when I said, oh, this is very, very bad. I felt serious pain. Felt serious pain. And um, there was a time, because of that, I made one... Uh, video that's the reason why in the beginning of this uh, um, audio I didn't want to mention my name because I've done some things that they were the federal government were looking for me they thought they thought I would live in Nigeria so they were looking for me they thought I lived there they couldn't find me and uh, when people around my area discovered that it was me um, I think uh, police came and they, they arrested me. They put handcuffs on my hand. They took me to the uh, uh, police station and stuff. But I didn't want to go in details because people that knows me will, will know about what I'm talking about now. So after a while, after a while, I said, what is this? Why did they arrest this man? I did not have any power to to go to see him to know what is what is going on. Then from there I kept on. I said definitely they will <clears throat> they will relieve him. They will release him, and he will be fine. So that's my encounter with with what I want to say with this one as well. I said, you see the template that he has laid down. That is what. Um, Simon Ekpa is following. So if you think you are going to destroy everything, you have to rethink again because everybody are going to the same place. We cannot live in another man's land forever. Definitely when you get old, you will go home. Definitely, no matter how long it will take. If you don't go home, what about your children? Your children will go home too. So this is the best way and the best time for us to embrace um, the truth. Follow Simon Ekpa. Do everything that he is saying because this is the template that has been laid down for a long time and it's been passed on to him as the disciple. The first time I didn't like how uh, Simon Ekpa do. Uh, it's not like I don't like him but it's just that I'm not following him, but from time to time I do I do see his video on Facebook. Like uh, when they arrested, um, um, where well, is is the kidnap now for the Kenyan one, and he put he sent a message on his phone, and saying that that uh, they only uh, kidnapped my leader, but they could not kid, uh, kidnap the disciple that uh, they're not going to take it easy for with them, with Nigeria, that they're going to continue for where Mazin and they cannot stop. So I was thinking it's a joke. From then, I still follow him every time. Anything he does, I follow him. And at the moment now, 
I've, I, I've noticed that he has a lot of qualification. He has been to the army. He has been to different things. He is a lawyer. And uh, in fact, he's a, he's a reserved army because if you don't take him serious now, the army people, if there's any fight or coming up in uh, where he lives in Finland, they will take him and he will join them. Then our struggle is, is finished from there because nobody is as spring up to to speak boldly like the way he's speaking a lot of people have called to arrest him arrest him arrest him but they they know that what he's doing is right let's uh, stop this uh, audio from here and uh, dear friends please put hand on deck let everybody do this once and for all it's for our own benefit for the future of our children. If you didn't benefit from it, your children will benefit from it. So let's take this issue very, very serious. This message, it comes from good heart. And please take it seriously. And it's very, very, very important. We have to go home. We cannot live in another man's land forever. I hope everybody here, please, we can put our hand together and we can get with you with the final. Uh -huh. So, this thing will stop here. Next time, we will talk. One day, one of these days, and I will see the person in the talk. So, bye. Bye.